Do you know that there is only one God in three eternal persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Do you know that Jesus said he is the only way to heaven, and his death and resurrection bring forgiveness of sins to all who believe? Welcome to the Pastor Study, a ministry of pastorstudy.org. Join us now as we study God's Word, the Bible, together. Welcome to the Pastor's Study. When I was 13 years old sitting in confirmation class, our Lutheran pastor taught us that demons are not real. Demons are really epilepsy in the New Testament. They didn't have terms in which to put epilepsy. They thought people were demon-possessed. So Jesus is really healing epileptics. Well, that doesn't work because how come the epileptics know who Jesus is when nobody else does? And then I won't go into details, but when I was 19, I was in a cabin in the woods and had a, an experience that taught me demons are real. I should have believed that because of what the Bible teaches, not because of some experience. But we're going to learn today, demons are real, but the power of Jesus is more real. <laughs> Would you take out your Bible? Turn with me to Acts chapter 16, and let's pray. Father, as we see the devil all over the world running governments and just doing all kinds of evil things, remind us, Lord, that Jesus is more real, more powerful than the devil. And Lord, if anyone is watching this uh, and, and needs a demon cast out, we pray that you would deliver them this day. Speak to us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Acts chapter 16, verse 16. And it happened as they, the apostles, Paul and Silas, were going to the place of prayer. A certain slave girl with a demon comes up. First lesson today, Satan likes to interrupt prayer. While they're going to pray is when this demonic thing happens. And there's an old saying, Satan trembles when he sees the weakest Christian on his knees. And there's another saying, when it comes to prayer, Satan will always give you something else to do if only arranging a window shade. <laughs> so Satan hates it when you pray. So let me ask you a question. Do you pray? You have a time every day when you're alone with God and you're talking to God. I encourage you to give the devil a conniption fit this week and pray every day. I had a, cup, a person say to me, but, you know, if everything's predestined, why pray? And I said, because God not only predestines the end... He predestines the means to the end, and the means by which God accomplishes his purposes is prayer. God is predestined that prayer works. That's why we pray. And, and also I pray, I said to him, for my mental health. If I don't pray, I get real nervous. So pray. Next lesson is in verse 16. As they were going to the place of prayer, a certain slave girl, having a spirit of divination, met us. Literally in the Greek, it's, she had a python spirit. In ancient Greece, there was the Oracle of Delphi. People from all around ancient, uh, the ancient world would go to Delphi, where the python spirit spoke through the Delphic priests. And... This girl has one of those python spirits, and she's give, telling fortunes. Uh, today, it's kind of like channeling. If you go to a seance, which you shouldn't, the psychic might channel Dead Uncle Joe from beyond the grave is going to speak now, and Dead Uncle Joe speaks. But the reality is, the girl had a demon. And maybe this is chicanery, but very possibly she was tapping into supernatural knowledge. Satan can give you supernatural knowledge, which leads to the next lesson. Not all miracles are from God. Uh, Jesus said in Matthew 24, false prophets and false uh, uh, 
uh, Christ will arise to show great signs and wonders to lead astray, even if possible, the elect. Second Thessalonians 2, the Antichrist will come with all power and pretended signs and wonders. So not all, all miracles are from God. Satan can do miracles. I mean, the cult of Christian science, it's neither Christian nor scientific, was founded by Mary Baker Eddy. Supposedly, she could do miracles. She could do healings. Just because somebody can do a healing doesn't mean they're from God. The devil can do miracles. Many uh, years ago, I'm sightseeing in Massachusetts. And I'm in this kind of upstairs in this house, kind of a bed and breakfast. And I had the upstairs, this nice old lady was, was, who owned the house. And she's explaining to me everything. And, and here's your room, et cetera. And, and she, oh, you're a pastor. How wonderful. And I, uh, she talked about God and everything. And right before she left, she said, I believe in Mary Baker Eddy. Oh, she goes downstairs. God, do I go downstairs and talk to her about Christian science? And... I thought, well, no, I'm renting her room. You know, I, I'll leave her alone. But I, I prayed for her soul. Suddenly, I opened the door. Pastor, I brought you dinner. And she comes in with her tray, and, and I have dinner with her. And we talked. And her, she said, but my father was healed by Christian science. And I tried to make the point to her, just because somebody can do a miracle or can tell fortunes, doesn't mean they're from God. Gratefully, it's off the air. There used to be a terrible television show called Crossing Over. And the psychic would, would have somebody in the studio stand up and he would channel or your, your mother is telling you that she wants you to have that painting that was in the, in the living room. How did you know that? And then they start crying. Well, either it's chicanery or he's tapping into something demonic. But Christians, we are to not get into talking to the dead. The Bible forbids that. Nor, nor horoscopes. The thing that guides our life is not a psychic. It's this book. Verse 16. A certain slave girl having this spirit, python spirit, met us. She was bringing her masters much profit by fortune telling. Here's the next lesson. There is money in the occult. I mean, the New Age section at Barnes & Noble is huge. Dial 900 psychic. Uh, that makes lots of money for people. And, and I, I'm going to add this too. Beware of Christian prophets who are in it for the profit. Uh, somebody showed me a letter from a certain TV preacher who, gratefully, he's not on TV anymore because he went to jail. But the, the letter said that you need God's blessing and you need to sow a ministry money gift into this ministry. And if you don't, you're not going to get your blessing. And this person showed it to me. Pastor Brock, is this right? I said, no. <laughs> Beware of Christian prophets who are in it for the prophet. Verse 17. Following after Paul and us, this slave girl, kept crying out, saying, These men are servants of the Most High God who are proclaiming to you the way of salvation. Here's the next lesson. Satan can tell the truth. I mean, Jesus called Satan the father of lies, and he is, but he's sneaky. He can throw some truth in. These people were servants of the Most High. He can tell you a lie, uh, 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 the truth, to get you to buy a lie. This is called a Satan sandwich. He'll tell you a little truth here, a little truth here, to get you to buy the lie in between. You know, maybe when you were a kid, to get you to swallow some foul-tasting medicine, your mom would mix a little honey with it. <laughs> Satan does that. To get you to swallow a lie, he'll tell you some truth. I mean, I'll tell you what I thought of. My mom died many years ago. But one day I came home and, Tommy, have you seen Sylvia on TV? 
I said, yeah, mom, she's a psychic. Oh, no, she's a good Christian woman. You know, she talks about God and angels. I said, mom, she talks to the dead. And the Bible says we're not to try to talk to the dead. And, and you know, and they're not angels that she's talking to. I think it's demonic. But uh, Satan throws lies mixed in with truth to get you to swallow it. Satan can even tell the truth. I'll, I'll give you another example. Take this for what you think it's worth, but it happened. My sister died many years ago. <clears throat> and one night I woke up and sat up in bed. I think I woke up. Maybe I was asleep for this, or maybe it was real. I'm not sure, but because when I woke up, I was sitting up. So I wonder if it didn't happen. But my dead sister is floating outside the bedroom window. And I said, Ruthann. And she said, Tommy. I said, is Jesus coming back soon? And my sister said, yes, Jesus is coming very soon. And then she started saying some things that were very unbiblical. And then she vanished and I am sitting up in bed. You know, and I thought to myself, that was a $3 bill. <laughs> Satan can tell you some truth, but he's doing it to get you to buy a lie. So be careful. Verse 18, but when her masters saw that their hope of profit was gone, because the demon was cast out, so she can't tell fortunes anymore. There's the next lesson. Paul turned, but Paul was greatly annoyed. That's the point. Paul was greatly annoyed and turned and said to the spirit, here's the next lesson. Satan likes to annoy God's servants. As the apostles would go around the, the Roman Empire preaching the gospel, Satan hated it, so he annoyed them. And there's a saying, if you want to know where God is working, look to see where Satan is attacking. I'm going to repeat that. If you want to know where God is working, look to see where Satan is attacking. Talk about attacks. Planned Parenthood opened an abortion clinic two minutes from where I live. It grieves me every day as I drive by that place, knowing what they're doing inside that clinic. On Friday is when they do the abortions. And so often on Friday, there's a small group of Christians in front, praying peacefully, handing out literature, trying to get mothers to turn around. So I saw that two weeks ago and I thought, I'm gonna stop and thank them. So I, I went up and I thanked the Meech. Thank you for being out here praying and trying to help the babies from not being killed. And this one, pro, a counter protester, pro-life, pro-choicer is out in front. And when he hears I'm a pastor, he just verbally starts attacking me. And he just attacked. The t I tried to, I tried to, inter uh, no, it was horrible. He follows me to my car and, and, it took me a couple hours to shake that off. And these poor people in front have to put up with him doing that all day when they're in front. I mean, I don't know how long he's out there, but oh, But if you want to know where God is working, look to see where the devil is attacking. Look at verse 18. And Paul said to the spirit, to the demon, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ. And there's the next lesson. Demons exist. This is not epilepsy. <laughs> this is a demon. And Keith Green, who was a Christian singer, and then he died many years ago, but he used to sing this song. This is the devil singing. My job keeps getting easier as time keeps slipping away. I can imitate the brightest light and make night look just like day. I put some truth in every lie to tickle itching ears. You know, I'm drawing people just like flies. They like what they hear. I'm gaining power by the hour. They're falling by the score, you know. It's getting very simple now that no one believes in me anymore. Oh, heaven's just a state of mind, my books read on your shelf. Oh, have you heard that God is dead? I made that one up myself. 
They dabble in magic spells. They get their fortunes read. They heard the truth, but turned away, and they followed me instead. I used to have to sneak around, but now they just open their doors. You know, no one's watching for my tricks since no one believes in me anymore. Well, the, the truth of this lesson in, in, in Acts 16 is demons are real. Verse 18 and Paul said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out at that very moment. Here's the next lesson. Christians have power over Satan in Jesus' name. Here's a man at the zoo, and here he watches the zookeeper go in and feed this untamed tiger. And, and when the zookeeper came out, the man said, you're a brave man to go into that cave with the tiger. And he said, I'm not brave. That's an old tiger. Doesn't have any teeth. <laughs> you know, Satan growls a lot and he scares us and he, and he makes us fear him, but his teeth have been pulled out. If you're a believer in Christ, you're protected because at Calvary, when Jesus died on the cross, he overcame the power of the devil. So as long as you are in Christ, you're protected in ways that this world is not. I had a couple that said to me once, you know, our daughter is having strange things happen at night and seeing things. And they explained it. It sounded kind of demonic. And I said to them, when you go to bed every night, do two things. Pray that God will send angels to protect your daughter. And then number two, plead the blood of Jesus over her, which means God, Jesus shed his blood on the cross for our daughter's salvation, for the forgiveness of her sins. You have overthrown the devil by your death on the cross. So Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus, the death of Christ over my daughter before she goes to bed. Verse 19, when the master saw that their hope of profit was gone, now that she can't tell fortunes anymore, they're not going to make money anymore. There's the next lesson. If you do, uh, the next lesson, Christianity puts a dent in the world's business. There's a story many years ago, a man in England was looking for the pub. And he, he goes up on the street and says, sir, where is the pub in this village? Oh, we don't have a pub in this village. What do you mean? Every village in England has a pub. Why don't you have a pub in this village? And the man looked up. 100 years ago, John Wesley walked through our town. <laughs> and he went on. Now that Walgreens... Walmart, CVS have all announced that they're going to dispense the abortion pills in states where it's legal, like my liberal state of Minnesota. All the uh, Walmarts, Walgreens, and CVSs will become a mini abortion clinic. Wouldn't it be wonderful if a lot of Christians would call their pharmacists and say, please don't do that. I don't want to, I'd rather keep my business here. Would you please not do the abortion pill? Wouldn't it be wonderful if an army of pharmacists all over America would stand up and say, we're not dispensing these things? Because when God touches a human life, it affects the devil's business. Back in 1904 was the Welsh Revival. Big Welsh, in Wales, England, was a huge revival movement. So many people came to Christ, they say, that the police didn't have much to do. <laughs> I mean, we have so much violence now in the streets in America. It's because we've rejected God. We needed, desperately need a revival to get God back in our culture. I mean, somebody told me right before the show started, our governor of Minnesota, Tim Walls, just signed an executive order making Minnesota a safe state so children can travel here to get gender-affirming care. You know what that is? That if a child, a 12-year-old is confused, they'll give you hormone blockers, or hopefully it didn't include sex change operations on a 12-year-old, but that wasn't spelled out. But my, we've become an evil country. 
verse 19. When the masters saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas, dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities, and when they had brought them to the chief magistrates, they said, these men are throwing our city into confusion. Being Jews, they're proclaiming customs which is not lawful for us to accept, being Romans. And the crowd rose up together against them, and the chief magistrates tore their robes off them and proceeded in order to beat them with rods. And after they had afflicted many blows upon them, they threw them into prison. Here's the last lesson. If you do God's work, prepare for persecution. Paul and Silas delivered this little girl from the devil and they got beat up for it. <laughs> I just got <clears throat> read the uh, persecution magazine for the month from persecution.org. India. Radical Hindu nationalists attack Christians in 20 villages for refusing to convert back to Hinduism from Christianity. The attackers looted and destroyed the homes of many Christians and desecrated three churches. Nigeria. Fulani militants attacked village church in Kudani state in Nigeria. The church worship service was about to start when the attackers arrived at the village riding on motorcycles, shooting sporadically. They killed one Christian and cap kidnapped 53 other Christians who are still being held captive. Congo. Rebels detonated a bomb, killing at least 17 and injuring dozens more at a church in the Congo. Hundreds of Christians were gathered for a baptism when the blast went off. One pastor said, limbs and other body parts are scattered everywhere as more dead are being found in the rubble. If you follow after God, expect persecution. Martin Niemöller was a Lutheran pastor in Germany in the 1940s. He refused to bow the knee to, to Hitler. He was thrown in jail for that. One of his friends who didn't think the pastor should have done that visits him in jail and says, Pastor Niemöller, why are you here? And Niemöller looked at him and said, Friend, why aren't you here? If you disrupt the devil's business, you will be persecuted, but so be it. Because here's the, 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 the main point of this whole story is, yes, Satan is strong. Yes, he attacks. But Jesus is much stronger. So follow Jesus, not the devil. 500 years ago, Martin Luther wrote the great hymn, A Mighty Fortress. And it goes like this. And though this world with devils filled should threaten to undo us, we will not fear, for God has willed his truth to triumph through us. The prince of darkness grim, we tremble not for him. His rage we can endure, for lo, his doom is sure. One little word, Jesus, shall fail him. So. The world's being run by the devil right now, but ultimately God runs things and will put everything right at the second coming. So follow Jesus, not the devil. Amen. Welcome to the portion of the pastor study where we ask Pastor Brock questions regarding the Bible. Pastor Brock, our first question today, how does a person know if he has a demon? <laughs> Yeah, the, the question is, how do I know if my problem is uh, 5 foot 11 or 11 foot 5? In mm -hmm. other words, how do I know if this is just a human problem dealing with my personal sin or if it's something bigger than me, if it's actually demonic? Well, in the New Testament, the demonic possessed would act very strange. They, you know, they drool or they roll on the flower and, or they'd know who Jesus was and scream out. And mm -hmm. so that would be one indication. But you know, in the New Testament, Jesus and the apostles cast out demons, not infrequently. So I think it's more common than we think. Mm -hmm. uh, so there you go. Okay. Yeah. What should I do if I think I have a demon? If you think that the problem is 11 foot five, I would uh, maybe go to your pastor and, and, or a Christian friend that you know and, 
and uh, get, get prayer, ask them to pray over you. Many years ago when I was in seminary, I had something demonic going on. Mm -hmm. And there was a pastor in town who dealt with what's called deliverance ministry. Mm -hmm. And he prayed over me and really it immensely helped. Mm -hmm. So there, uh, it's hard to find them, but there are mm -hmm. pastors and churches that mm -hmm. will, will do this kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Actually, go to our website, pastorstudy.org, look for a show on deliverance, mm -hmm. and we did a, 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 a program with a, a deliverance minister. And he was amazing. He was great. He was amazing. Yeah. Where do demons come from? Well, th there's two ways to end. Well, first of all, demons and the devil are not eternal. Mm -hmm. Only God is eternal. Everything else is created. Mm -hmm. So did God create the devil? Well, the theory is that he created the angels, we know that, but and then the Bible talks about fallen angels, the angels that rebelled. Mm -hmm. So the theory is, but it never clearly spells it out, that Satan is, is one of the fallen angels and the demons are the fallen angels. All right, so that's probably the answer. But pr maybe this question is, why do people get demon possessed? Mm -hmm. Where do they come from? And I, I took a, believe it or not, when I was in college, uh, seminary, there was a course in demonology. Mm -hmm. And this professor who had experience in this stuff, he said from one of three places, one can be from dealing with the occult. Mm -hmm. So stay away from Ouija boards, seances, uh, Satan worship, that kind of thing. A second thing he said, grievous sin, mm -hmm. where just you commit a horrible sin that can open you up to demonic attack and the third one i don't remember <laughs> so there you go mona yeah if a person is delivered from a demon are they and they're cast out does that mean they die or are they free to roam? no the the de remember the the demons the guy had a demon and jesus cast the demons out of the man into the pigs mm -hmm. and then the pigs run over the cliff and, and drown into the sea but I think demons go from person to person. I don't, I don't think that they're going to die until the end, I, you know, until Judgment Day they're going to... That's get, what I thought about. Yeah, yeah. Um, what should I do if I feel I am under attack? You know, when I feel under attack, I, 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 I do this every night before I... In fact, that, that deliverance minister said, mm -hmm. pray for God to send the angels every night. Mm -hmm. So before I go to bed at night, I pray, God, send your angels. And then I pray and surround and fill me with the Holy Spirit. That's what I do when I'm feeling under attack. And a quick question. Yeah. Should Christians celebrate Halloween? Uh, you certainly shouldn't be dressing your kids up as the devil, as my mom and dad did to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I stay away from, I'm not saying it's a sin to let your kids dress up as an animal and go door to door as a giraffe or something but i would stay away from the demonic elements for sure and maybe the whole thing stay away from thanks for joining us today may you have a blessed week stay in god's word see you next time on the pastor thank you for watching the pastor study you can watch more of our programs at pastorstudy.org we are on the air preaching the good news of jesus christ because of the generous support of you our viewers would you consider supporting our ministry you may do so at pastorstudy.org or write the pastor study P.O. Box 41294, Minneapolis, Minnesota 55441. May the blessing of our one triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forever.